and welcome back to my channel and today's video is finally my bathroom makeover. This project has been so long in the making uh, and I finally am tackling it this month. Uh, and I thought that I would vlog the process and show you the whole uh, from beginning to end. So I'm going to be transforming this very basic tiled bathroom in my rented property into a slightly jazzier bathroom, hopefully with some renter friendly tips and tricks and a little bit of Facebook marketplacing and upcycling and some new bits as well. So hopefully there'll be a good mix in there and I hope you enjoy it. So as I said, I live in a rented property. So before I could do anything in the bathroom, I did have to ask permission from my landlords, but also there are some limits to what I could do in here. The whole room is tiled. So there's no real areas that I can paint. I can't do any feature walls or, and I didn't want to do the whole painting tiles. I'm not adverse to painting tiles. I have done it before, I know it can work, um, but this is a floor to ceiling tiled bathroom. That for me is too big a thing to paint. And also because it's a rented property, you'll then, the next tenant who lives here has to take on that responsibility to take care of those tiles that have been painted. So I decided not to go down that route. What I've decided to do is work with what's here, add a few bits and bobs to sort of jazz it up a bit. I'm gonna do something with the floor. I'm gonna add in some new furniture. I'm gonna change some of the fixings and also give the place just a really good deep clean Clean, and I think that that's just going to really, really help it as well. So I'm going to give you a little tour around the bathroom and talk you through the ideas that I've got and the things that I'm going to hopefully do, and then we'll, yeah, get going with it all. Okay, so here is a little bit of a tour of the room. So on the floor, what we've got is a very, very basic white uh, tile or off-white tile with grey grout, and it's okay. I did toy with the idea of painting it. Again, you can do some really cool effects by painting the tiles and then doing a stencil, but I decided not to for a couple of reasons. One, again, the upkeep, but two, there are some cracked tiles. And so I decided that the best thing to do would be just to cover them up. So I have actually purchased a self-adhesive tiled floor that I'm going to put down. I'm going to show you that in a little bit. So that's going to be one of the biggest transformations and it's going to be patterned, which hopefully will bring some interest into this room, which is obviously very plain and very white. The floor is going to try and tie in with this blue mosaic that runs around the room. I wanted to kind of work with that as the colour scheme. So the colour scheme is going to be blue and grey and obviously white. So in this corner we have a uh, shower. One of the things that I have already done uh, in here is this shower unit was so mucky and so lime scaly, it was horrid. I took the whole thing off the wall, uh, all this rod, I took the head off and um, I cleaned the whole thing and reattached it and actually attached a new... Um, Shower hose? Yeah, shower hose, because the other one was just, it was absolutely awful. And these are relatively cheap. It's not a big thing, but it makes a huge difference. And that looks so, so much nicer. Um, there's a couple of things in here that I'm going to want to do. I've already neatened up a lot of the sealant. It took me a while, but I ripped out a lot of the existing sealant and redid it myself. One of the things I'm going to do, um, I have cleaned the grout, but I have bought myself a little grout lightening or what rewinding kit and I'm going to do that to some of the areas of grout that are looking particularly grubby but a lot of it has cleaned up really really well. One of the big jobs I did already is I actually repainted the ceiling. I already had a tub of white bathroom paint, it's a relatively small room and so yeah I went round, I repainted all the coving and all the ceiling so that it's a bit more fresh, uh, it's a bit more white and bright um, so I have actually already done that. And I did this job that I've wanted to do for ages, which is the light um, fixture up there was covered in paint from whoever painted it. And I scraped all of that off. It drives me insane when people don't paint neatly and there's light, um, light switches and things like that covered in paint. So I scraped that off. This is how anal I am, people. This is how anal. Uh, so around here we've got the toilet and a little sort of raised tile area. Got this box here which has all of my cleaning supplies in which I like. It hides it all but I'm not sure about it being there. A 
above that we've got a little glass shelf which I'm not going to remove I do like it but I think I'm going to put a piece of artwork up there I do have a photo of mine uh, of Miami which I think is going to go there and move some of this stuff around um, over here we have my bath so a couple of things about this room you'll notice uh, not so much on camera but the shower tray and the bath panel have gone very very yellow and I have tried to clean it up and it's just not worked so I've kind of got to live with it as I said it's not looking that bad on camera the bath panel I'm actually going to cover with a white vinyl so I've actually pulled out this sealant was already split all around the bath so I've pulled out any of the really messy sealant and in other areas I've redone the sealant I've left this open and my plan is to tuck my white vinyl down here and reseal it all in so hopefully that'll look great um toilet wise staying the same but the toilet seat again you can't tell that badly on camera but it's very yellowed and it also is wonky and doesn't fit and so i think i might look into getting a new toilet seat but i need to see how much that is definitely going to get some new kitchen access um, kitchen get some new bathroom accessories like um, toilet brushes and things like that and i might even look to replace the toilet roll holder and the towel ring which is over here some things i'm going to upcycle so one of those will be my bath tray i think i'm going to paint that uh, a gray and i think i might paint my um, cleaning box gray as well one of the big things i'm definitely going to do is change these blinds so uh the room's obviously gone very dark now because i'm shooting against the light but these blinds are just oh they're awful they're those kind of um, fabric-y vertical blinds and um, they're broken <laughs> and they're yellowy and it's probably quite hard to see because they're backlit but I got permission to take them down and put up um, some new blinds instead so I'm going to try and find some nice sort of white Venetian blinds instead so one of the first jobs I'm going to do is take that blind down and, and clean all in that window I'm hoping I can use the original holes so I don't have to drill any new holes over here in this corner we have got a towel rail at the end of my bath so um, I haven't done any um, grout re-whitening over here I'm definitely going to do some over here but I have done some resealing and some neatening up around here um, the sealant along the back here behind the towel rail was awful um, so I scraped that out and did some new stuff I have permission to paint the towel rail so currently it is this so white enamel there are areas where the enamel is coming off it is a little bit scruffy uh, it's going rusty in a couple of places so I've had approval to paint this grey so I'm actually going to paint this a dark grey so it looks like a really nice not cast iron but it kind of has that feel so I'm really excited to do that definitely can't do anything about this shaving light it's just one of those things it's pretty ugly I'm not the biggest fan of it however it is quite useful sometimes to put that light on and for future tenants so you know I'm not going to mess with that but this mirror um, at my sink is great it's massive it's wonderful but it has some areas of wear and tear and rusting so I have actually asked permission and wait to hear back to put a frame around the mirror a wooden frame um, so I'm definitely hoping that I can do that and then under my sink is just it's such a mess it's so um, full of products and it just looks so messy so I bought this storage unit and there's a basket there and it's just it's just full of products so what I really want to do is have a built-in under the sink cupboard now this might be a little bit tricky because as you can see there is more boxing here underneath so any under the sink unit that I buy I'm going to have to hack apart with a jigsaw to fit around all of that boxing and it means because of that boxing the sink is very far forward so I suspect that any units will not be deep enough so I'll have to look into that but it's definitely something that I would like to do and again paint it maybe the same colour as my bath tray and whatnot so that would be what's under there 
And then, as I said, maybe some new bathroom accessories and definitely some new towels. My towels are looking so scruffy from hair dye and all sorts of other things. But yeah, probably one of the first jobs I'm gonna do is take down the blinds and um, clean all of this grout and everything and do all the grout re-whitening. Say that 10 times fast, grout re-whitening. So it's really echoey in here because I've literally emptied the whole room um, so that I can see every bit of grout that I want to clean. So I'm going to clean this whole wall. I've got my sugar soap here and a slightly abrasive uh, scrubber. And then I've also got... Da -da -da -da. This is the best thing ever. I've talked a lot about this on my Instagram. This is the Sonic Scrubber. So it's a battery powered little brush uh, with different heads and it's so good for cleaning things like grout and in the corners of your sealant and stuff like that. Uh, I got mine on Amazon, I will put it in the description box, but I have cleaned every inch of my house with this thing. I blooming love it. And then this is also really good. So this is the Dettol Mold and Mildew Remover. This has got a bit of bleach in it. It lightens up your grout. I'm uh, gonna wear rubber glove uh, to put my hand in the sugar soap mix because it obviously is not great on skin and yeah just get cleaning and get all this wall cleaned and sugar soap all of my towel rail. my floor tiles. I'm so excited about these. I love them. I think they'll add a really nice design to the room. I panicked because they went out of stock. So as I said, I'm in a rented property, so I have to ask permission for everything that I do. And I'd sent them a list of things I wanted to do in the bathroom, including this floor. And in the meantime, these floor tiles sold out. Um, so this is why it's taken so long. Um, they actually came back into stock last November and I quickly bought them. Um, they are a uh, peel and stick vinyl tile. So they come in a box of, I think there's 10 tiles in a box. They're like this, they're quite um, thin with a self-adhesive backing. You just cut them with a knife and you lay them out. Okay, so I have started re-whitening my grout. This is what I'm using. I'm using the Unibond Grout Reviver. So it's a bit jazzier than one of those pens that you might have seen. You do put a lot more on and you leave a lot of excess and then you wipe the excess off. So I'm just doing some of these areas here. So you can see this bit, it's like a spongy, can you see? Spongy applicator at the top and you literally just press it into the grout and then you leave it for half an hour and then you wipe the excess away. Okay, so I've got some exciting bathroom bits to show you, uh, which have either arrived or I've bought. So one of the first things is, uh, I mentioned that I was going to PVC the bath panel because it's kind of yellowing. And again, I keep saying this, but I wanna try and keep the budget quite small on this bathroom. I decided that instead of trying to paint the bath panel or do anything like that, I would PVC it. Loads of people on my Instagram, suggested Jess Rose vinyl which is beautiful but it's very pricey and so because I just want to do it plain white I have just gone for a cheap DC fix um, six pound roll and it's white gloss just plain and I figure at least if it doesn't work I've only spent six pound and so I'm going to give that a go. Then uh, one of the other things I bought on Facebook Marketplace, my favourite place in the whole world, is a new toilet seat. So again, I wasn't necessarily going to do this because it's not my bathroom and, and I could go to the landlord and ask for a new toilet seat, but it's kind of okay. It's just a little bit yellow and blah, blah, blah. But I found this one on Facebook Marketplace for £5. It's brand new in the box. And I zoomed in on the product name 
and found it. It is a Cook and Lewis B&Q toilet seat. So I was able to find all the measurements on their website, double checked it against my toilet seat and it is exactly the right size. So for five quid, I thought, why not? A brand new one, uh, that's not a lot of money to spend, have a nice one where, where all the metal fixings are not rusty and horrible. So I'm really pleased with that little find. That is a bargain. And then all these bits you can see are some bits from Next for the bathroom. So they have gifted me quite a few bits, accessories for the bathroom as part of this makeover. But the makeover was obviously my decision to do. So this isn't a sponsored video or anything like that. But I will say that all of these items are gifted and they will be marked as gifted or what I would call PR products in the description box. So first up, is a cute bath mat i love this bath mat now the only thing is it's absolutely huge um but they do tend to all be this big um but i just love the slogan this dark gray is perfect for the color that i'm going to paint the towel rail so that's one of the first things and from the same get naked range is this really cute bath towel with a bit of a slogan on and then a smaller hand towel version with a slogan on as well then for just some plain colour towels, I've gone for this colour which is called Slate Blue. So it's in that kind of cool, bluey grey area. I've got a few different sizes, a couple of hand towels and one uh, bath towel, I think. Yeah, one bath towel, uh, two hand towels. Then some bits of storage in this lovely dark grey colour. So the first thing is this uh, hanging shower caddy. So this basically hangs over your shower door, gives you some storage in the shower without having to sort of screw anything in. And again, it all ties in with this lovely dark grey colour that my towel rail is going to be. So light colour on my furniture and dark grey on my towel rail and my accessories. There's a little basket to match. I'm going to put some of my products in that. And then a couple of accessories is a new um, toilet roll holder in a dark grey and a new towel ring holder in a dark grey. So these, the colours are lovely, but they have this brass finish on the end and I'm, I've not actually got any brass in the bathroom. So I may, once these are up, just I might just paint that end bit in some friendship, just a dark grey. The other thing I wanted to show you is another Facebook Marketplace bargain. There is just stuff dotted all around my house. Honestly, this is in my bedroom for some reason. So this is actually a blind um, for the window. I got this on Facebook Marketplace. Um, and it is pretty much what I was looking at and what I wanted to get. It is a PVC wood effect blind. One of the things about living in rented accommodation and doing a makeover is you have to decide how much you want to spend on things. And some things like this blind, once I've taken that old blind down and I put a new blind in, it's probably going to stay there. I'm not going to take it away at the end of the tenancy. If it was my own house, I think I would have spent some money and got some really nice white wooden blinds or even shutters but it's not my house and the window is such an odd size, I would have to have them custom made and I don't want to spend all that money. So the great thing about this blind is that these are very thin plasticky and you can just cut them with scissors and you can just hacksaw this to the right size. And this isn't far off the size, I've only got to lose I think a centimetre off each end. So it's a bit of a faffy job to cut each of these blinds individually but this was £7 it's brand new in its box I've had it out I've checked all the fixtures are there and I just think it's going to make that window look a million times better um, let more light in and just make it look fresher and more modern okay so I've taken the old blind down and I really want to try and utilize the existing holes I really don't want to have to drill into tiles um, it's not my most favorite thing in the world and I don't really want to put more holes into the PVC. So what I've decided to do is actually create a wooden batten that runs the whole way along the window. Uh, I can screw it into the window through these existing holes and then I can attach my new blind to the wood instead of attaching it to the actual window. So here is my batten. Um, it's actually um, uh, one batten with then three other batter, smaller battens attached. So my new blind actually has three fixings at the very end and in the middle. 
And so I'm gonna use these very super long screws to screw this pattern into the original holes and I've painted it white um, so that it'll blend in with the window. So one of the good things about using this baton of wood and why I'm sorry I'm balanced on my bath and why I'm so glad that I used it is this whole bathroom is tiles. There would be so much drilling into tiles needed. And for example here I put the centre bracket in the centre because that's where I thought it would go. And then when I actually looked at the design of the blind it's actually designed to go off centre here. So because it's wood I just unscrewed it and screwed it back in and you're only damaging this wood and once the blinds up all of these holes are hidden and you know I've had I decided to add the second bracket as well I thought why not may as well have that extra support and again you're just drilling into this wood you're not constantly trying to drill into tiles and making mistakes and so I'm really happy I did it the other reason I did it I uh, just so you know is because there's handles on the PVC this double uh, batten just pulls the blind forwards and it means they're away, it, it's away from the uh, window handles so it's not going to interfere. Good morning, it is the next day, um, my camera battery died so I just carried on with bits and bobs. One of the things I was doing last night, I've already done the other side, is chopping down this blind. I'm not going to lie, it's quite boring and tedious um, so I've hacksawed this large section and then you have to cut um, the, each blind down individually. You can just cut them with scissors, they're very thin. Uh, it's like a wood effect PVC, it's one of the reasons I went for it, as I said, just because it's easy to shorten and it's quite low cost. So I found a under the sink cabinet on Amazon, super cheap, I got it from Amazon Warehouse, so it's kind of X warehouse stock, which means the packaging's a little bit damaged. Uh, but it's got the right style which matches my cleaning box and I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to slightly hack it apart in order to get it to fit under my sink and around all that boxing and that's also why I don't want to spend too much money on it so this was perfect. Okay so um, this is the top of my new um, bathroom cupboard so what I did was I attached this is actually the door catch the magnetic door catch I was hoping I would be able to cut the notch for the sink further down but this is where the doors click onto so this is the deepest that I can go with the um, the sink recess so this is what came as standard and I obviously want the cupboard to sit a lot further back my sink is very very far forward so basically I bought this flexible tool um, from screw fix so this is one of those tools that has all these little plastic things that can move and you can push it up against uh, a shape uh, like a door frame architrave round a sink round a toilet anything and it will create the curve and you can use that then to draw out your design for you to cut so that's what I did so this is the shape of my um, sink hopefully so I'm going to take this door catch off now I know where that sits I'm going to cut this out with my jigsaw um, and then I'm going to have to do the same on the two um, internal shelves as well Okay, so the hole was a tiny little bit bigger than I would have liked it. I would have liked it a really, really snug fit. Um, so I think maybe my curve tool let me down slightly. However, bigger is obviously better. It's not the end of the world. And also, once this is all painted and everything, I think it'll look really, really nice. The other thing I could do is possibly add a flexible trim around here. Um, I might look at doing that, but I want to paint it all and see how I feel about it once it's installed. <clears throat> so, this is slightly precariously balanced at the moment because this is one of the other reasons why I bought a cheap unit because I really do have to hack it apart to make it fit here uh, behind my sink or around my sink. So my sink actually has this boxing area. So on the right hand side of the unit, I'm actually going to have to notch it out in order for it to sit around this boxing. But because my sink is so far out and these kind of uh, under the sink cupboards, they standard only come in 30 centimeters deep. So it was never gonna reach all the way to the back of the wall. Now, I am possibly going to solve this. I want to see once I've built it all and cut it all around, if this huge big gap at the back bothers me. If it does, I may buy some extra 
architrave molding or beading or something and add it to fill in the gap. Okay, I decided that the gap around the unit did bug me. So, I have found these two bits of scrap wood first, this long batten um, with like a curved edge. I'm also going to cut a brand new top for the unit out of this bit of 6mm MDF that I had in my shed and it means that I can get the curve that goes around the sink absolutely perfect this time and I can have it extend all the way to the back of the wall. So I've cut my battens for the side of my cabinet down to size. I'm actually just gluing them on with my favourite Gorilla Glue uh, to begin with. Just so I can get them absolutely, I need this perfectly flush. And then once that glue's dried, I'm going to put some screws in from the other side um, just to properly hold it. But yes, yeah, so I'm just going to leave that to dry and then I'm going to cut my new top for... The unit okay so ignore all the cutting dust but i'm going to attempt to um cut this shape again now i possibly think maybe the mistake i made is measuring the curve down at the bottom when in reality the top is going further up the pedestal maybe the shape changes towards the top of the pedestal so i think i need to push the tool in up here uh, it can't do the whole way round and that's also I think where I got it wrong so you have to use the push the tool here and draw that out then push the tool here anyway I'm going to try it again with cardboard I've got a bit of cardboard instead which I'm going to cut the shape out of this first and keep double checking it around the sink to see that I've got it right So that's the front shape created. Now I need to try and do round the sides and this is kind of where it went wrong last time, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so I've got this. I'm gonna try cutting this out now and um, duplicating that over the other side and doing a bit of jiggery pokery, which would be really, really boring to watch. Um, so I'm not gonna film it. <laughs> so I glued the new top on using uh, no more nails and a bit of Gorilla Glue and I weighted it down all night and clamped it. Um, just to make sure it's proper flat and I um, am gonna have to go around and add some filler in between and give it a sand and everything but I reckon it's gonna look really really nice when it's painted so I'm not too worried I did think about buying some beading to actually bead the whole way round but I'm trying to keep the cost down as well there's loads more I could do to the unit but eventually you think why are you spending so much money on a 30 pound unit do you know what I mean so yeah, I've got to take all this off now and give the sides a bit of a sand and a bit of a filler. And then tomorrow, hopefully, my paint's arriving and it can be all action stations. I'm excited. Okay, so I've had the unit outside today. I have, I filled it um, and left it to dry as I showed you. And then basically what I've done is I've sanded all the filler um, at completely flat. So now there's a really flush join between the new top and the existing cabinets when that's painted you won't be able to tell at all it's just gluing at the moment this back area where i cut some out has obviously removed some fixings and i do think that's made it just in this corner a little bit less structurally sound so i've just popped some glue on it and then um, a clamp so i'm going to leave that for now but i have already started painting the doors so this is the paint that I chose for the cabinet and a couple of the other things in the bathroom. It is the uh, Friendship in City Slicker, so it's a mid-grey. I've chosen the Friendship Alfresco range because it's waterproof. It won't matter if this gets splashed um, from the sink and all that kind of thing. So I have sugar soaped these um, cabinet doors, even though obviously they're brand new, but and given them a light sand and they have had one coat and so has the middle shelf and obviously so will the cabinet eventually as well so i'm going to do another coat on these uh, i'm doing a mixture of brush and then smoothing out any brush lines uh, with a little roller and i will also probably do a little light sand in between coats which stops any brush marks from showing too i also bought the finishing coat and i'm actually going to put that on top um but yeah i need to do another coat of paint on these and then flip them over 
I've only done the one side but it dries pretty quick so that's today's job is to get stuff painted once that cabinet uh, glue has dried I'm gonna get a coat of paint on that cabinet as well it's exciting I love the painting stage So I've been doing loads and loads of painting. I finished the storage box, that's all done. The unit has got um, a couple of coats on the outside. The inside at the moment's just got one coat. The doors I'm still going with. So the tricky thing is that I, I love French chic paint. I think the coverage is great um, and the colors are lovely and the finish and everything, but it is pricey and I'm trying to keep the cost down on this makeover. So I actually only bought um, this small tin of this colour. So this is a 250ml tin and this was a tenner. And I would ideally like to get the unit, obviously I finished the box which is great, but the unit painted uh, from this one little tin. So I'm trying my hardest to conserve paint. So one of the things that I'm doing is I'm not pouring it into a roller tray. I'm applying it with a brush, then I'm getting any excess out of the corners with a slightly smaller brush, and then I'm using my foam roller to smooth over and get rid of any brush marks, and that minimizes paint loss. I painted a lot last night, and one of the first things I did was, this top is MDF. MDF is a sucker of liquids, and if you try and paint unsealed MDF, it just sucks all the paint in. So all of these raw edges where I've cut with the jigsaw, I have sealed them with tacky glue, but you can use any kind of PVA. So seal your MDF with PVA first before you paint, and that'll stop all your paint getting sucked in. Okay, so I've taken the old towel ring off. This was the um, type of bracket that was in there with two raw plugs drilled into the grout. So obviously I want to use the existing fixings. My fixing is a square and you can put two screws in, one and above and below. I'm actually going to put one in the centre hole and just use one of the existing holes and the actual um, unit around the the towel ring will actually hide both of these and it's only got a towel on it it doesn't need to hold any weight so one raw plug in the wall will be absolutely plenty This is the colour that I'm using. I'm trying not to tip everywhere. It is the Friendship in the shade Smudge, which is a dark grey. Now, one of the top tips I read on the Friendship Facebook group, in order to get behind the back of the towel rail, is to wear a plastic glove. So I, I always keep gloves and things from my um, hair dye. So a plastic or latexy glove. And then... A sock. So you use a sock, put it in the paint, and you can get your hand behind and coat the back of the bars. So I'm going to start at the top. When I get down to the bottom, I will show you how I'm going. one coat done. The sock worked quite well to get down the back. Um, the one thing I say about using Friendship is the most important thing is to just get that first coat on because once you've got one coat of paint on, the next coat of paint sticks to that coat of paint and so on and so on. So don't be freaked out if like you get these big areas 
because that's got paint on it. So the next coat is going to go on there. It's going to go on there thicker and the next one and the next one. So, uh, yeah, that's coat one. It was a faffy job, but I think it's going to look lush. Uh, I'm going to give that coat loads of time to dry. I think it's, oh, look, I've just spotted a drip. We don't want drips. Uh, yeah, so my top tip for using the um, the hand in the glove is once you've gone round the back uh, of the bars is then just to use a little brush and just go round and just make sure if there's any drips or big blobs that you've smoothed them out because friendship does sort of like go off quite quickly and you can be left with bumps, which is fine. You can sand them down once they're dry. But that would be my top tip. The towel rail has had two coats of friendship and I have uh, with this um, quite a fine spongy sanding block I've just given it a light sand down because there were a few little bumps and things and I want it to be absolutely blooming perfect so the good thing is with these angles is you can actually put them between the bars and run it along um, so I've just hoovered it to get rid of any um, dust. That's gonna have a third coat of Friendship and then it's actually gonna have a fourth coat. Or shall I do the third coat? Basically I have a finishing coat, which is like a sealant, uh, but it's quite glossy. So what I do is I actually mix it in with my final coat. So then it's not glossy, but you do get that good hard wearing finish. So I think I'm gonna do my last two coats with some finishing coat in it. So I'm getting ready to PVC the side of my bath. I have scrubbed it all with sugar soap and I have cut the piece to approximately the right length um, because I'm gonna have to do a lot of trimming and smoothing as I go. I have no idea how this is gonna go. I have no idea what technique I'm gonna use. I'll set the camera up. We'll see what happens. job and from far away it looks blooming wonderful it looks really really nice close up I can't say that I have trimmed it that cheap I made a boo-boo here there are a few bumps and things but I'm gonna run a line of sealant along here because the height between the bath panel and this panel differs the whole way along so I was always gonna run some white sealant the whole way along and spread with my finger to make it look neat and seal in this end, which I, I don't know if you remember, but I dug all out. So I reckon for now, for a six quid solution, it's okay. The towel rail is finished and painted and the side of the bath panel is PVC'd and all sealed in. So the floor is looking super clean because today is floor day. Hooray, hooray, hooray. So one of the first things I had to do is give the room a really, really good hoover. And then I have sugar soaked and scrubbed this entire floor. So I'm now gonna leave it for a while to dry before I do anything with the tiles. And then, yeah, that's my big project for today. Gonna need to lay them all out work out the design, what's gonna to need to be cut, and etc. etc. One of the first things I need to do is decide how I'm gonna lay them out. Now, the floor pop site does say that you shouldn't lay these tiles over tiles that are already grouted. And if you do, you should fill in the grout so that the floor is level. However, I live in a rented property. I would possibly need to take these back up again when I leave. So my instinct is, um, to lay them without filling in the grout, but because these are a little bit smaller as well, is to lay them so that they don't overlap the grout. The rules for tiling are that you should find the center of the room and then you should work out from the center. I suspect that this here, this quad, is the center. However, what I'm not the biggest fan of is these tiles that are half cut right next to the bath. 
and I wonder whether I should just lay a row of full tiles from the bath and work my way downwards because it is only a very, very small room. So I think that's the arrangement that I'm going to go with, um, which is the first tile butted right up into that corner and then just working along the bath panel and then working down. So um, what I'm going to do is just stick the ones that need no cutting first. Okay, so I've got a little bit further. It is really time consuming matching up the pattern and you do get to the point where you're just like, it's never gonna be perfect, the match up. Um, so you have to just sort of go for the best one. Um, I did um, have to peel up one tile and then try and relay it again and the glue did seem to be less tacky and it was starting to come up. So I have used some of my own spray adhesive. It's just around that corner just to keep that corner down. Um, but yeah, they're pretty easy to lay. Like I said, it's just the time consuming thing of spinning it until you get the match. And obviously when you come to be working in a quad, you're trying to get it to match on like several sides. So it becomes even more tricky, but a few more to go that will be full tiles without any cutting. And then I think I'm gonna leave them and have some lunch so that they can properly like set down as well. And then after lunch, I'll start doing the tiles that need to be cut. I have done most of the tiles that didn't need cutting and I've done a few that needed cutting and I just thought I would show you uh, the technique that I'm using in order to um, cut round shapes like the sink. This tile seems to match really well so I've put a pencil arrow on it to show which way the tile is going to be going and then I'm actually, even though I've got one of these jazzy uh, measuring tools which I used for the cabinet I'm actually going to use the paper technique because I've used this on the toilet and it has worked really really well uh, the good thing about the paper technique is you can put it along like this and you know exactly where you've got to do it so I'm going to do this in two halves so the first thing that you do is you um, put the paper in uh, where the tile is going to go and you sort of push it up to the thing that you're going to want to cut around and put just a general mark like this. Uh, then with scissors, you're gonna want to create uh, little slices. So cutting the paper like this, it really doesn't have to be precise. again and now those bits that you've cut will be able to bend around the item that you're trying to draw around and what I do is I just I, you just want to push in with either some scissors or you can use the base of your pencil but you just want to get those um, paper things to bend into the shape uh, keep your paper still in that corner and then you can start to draw the curve so push each of the things in when you're drawing. And as I said, I've already done this a couple of times to do the toilet and it's worked really well. So now that I have perfected the technique, I thought that I would show you. <laughs> okay, so push in with your pencil and draw the whole way around. And you'll be left with this. Then um, cut it. And then lay your paper back in and just double check that it's um, exactly how you want it. So I'm actually going to just, I need to chop off that little bit there. Okay, and then what you can do is, uh, with the tile that you've chosen, you know that this is the way up that it's going to be. 
You can now put this in the bottom corner of the tile, make sure it's all lined up and you can now draw the design of the curve on. What I can do is go back in with this piece of paper and um, draw myself a new curve. here to cut on, it's an old chopping board, place my tile on there and with a very sharp knife I'm going to gently just score the design so you don't want to press too hard, you're just trying to score in along that line that you've drawn. And then following that same score line, go around it again. Again, don't try and go um, too fast or press too hard because if you make a mistake, once you've cut this, <laughs> you've kind of cut it. Okay, then these tiles can actually be um, snapped. So where you've scored, well, I've got a little wiggle there, but you can sort that out after. You should be able to snap it, and then I've been going in with scissors because you need to um, chop off the paper back in. And go in with scissors around. Then double check it. I'm not too worried about it being perfect because I actually plan to put some sealant around here. Check it fits, and if you haven't chopped anywhere, like I don't think this is chopped deep enough, and what you can do is you can just go in with the knife very carefully and just gently shave little bits off with the knife. And then because I've handled this one quite a lot, I am going to just stick a little bit of extra adhesive. This is just a contact adhesive, which is just going to help. Uh, make sure that this one stays down and then I will clean up all the sticky residue uh, tomorrow when the floors have time to go off. And peel off the paper from the top like this. Use the knife to get off any bits like this. And then slot the floor in. Try not to touch the adhesive, push it in to all the corners, press it in, and around the toilet, that's a really good fit that. The ones that need to be cut for just down here straight, all I do is again measure, score with the knife lightly and then just snap the tile and then you can stick them in. So yeah, last few now, crack it out and I will show you the finished result. Update on the floor. Uh, I finished it, it took me a long time. It took me through into the evening. This is actually two days after I finished. Um, I went away, I left it and I came in the next day and there were a few of the tiles peeling up. I don't know if it's because I didn't clean my floor properly. I know that there's definitely, so here for example, there were some uneven tiles, um, like my tiles generally were uneven, so I have got this little lip here, uh, which is very small, um, but there is a sort of ridge and you can see a black edge, so I may put some white sealant or something in there just to hide that black edge. But yeah, there was a few, few places where I had to go in with some Gorilla Glue grab adhesive and um, yeah, stick them down. So the jury's out about these. I've had loads of people on Instagram say that they're stuck absolutely fine. One of the things I want to do is, I do want to seal round uh, my shower, my toilet and my sink. Uh, and possibly I might um, fill round the room, I don't know. I'm not gonna fill here, they, they, they run sort of, slightly under the bath panel and here I actually lifted my threshold and um, put the tiles underneath. So I think what I'm going to do is um, 
You can't clean them properly for a week. I've cleaned off some of the sticky residue, but they're still a little bit sticky. Um, I think I'm going to leave them for a week or so and then seal uh, around. So that won't be done for this video, but this is the finished floor. I am very, very happy with the pattern. I just hope that they wear okay and they don't continue to lift up and drive me absolutely insane. Um, but we shall see. So uh, one of my jobs for today is to do this trim around the mirror. I'm actually going to make this into a little Instagram reel. So I might not actually put this into the video. I will show you quickly the wood that I've got. So this is the wood trim I've got. It's called a, um, oh, I'm trying to remember what they call it. I think they call it a ribbed um, trim. And I'm going to cut it with my mitre saw and basically make a frame to go around the entire mirror. That's one of my last jobs. I'm going to glue that on. And then while that's gluing, I'm going to get everything back into the bathroom, put the shelf back up, put all my towels in here, my bath mat, put the cabinet in and everything. And then once everything's in, I'm going to debate about what color to paint this. I have no idea. I can't decide. Okay. And here is the finished room. So here's the floor, all done. It's been doing really well. It's now a few days since. I've not had any lifting, so I'm really, really happy with it. I think that the design looks beautiful. I'm really happy with how the blue works with the blue around the rest of the room. So I guess take you on a little tour in the shower. Got my new um, shower hanging caddy. All of my beautiful white grout now, it's absolutely gorgeously white. Over here we've got my new towel ring with one of my new towels in and a new light pole in also a dark grey colour as well. Then my shelf is back up and on there is my print of Miami, so that's a photo I took of uh, one of the lifeguard stations in Miami. I love the blue in it. Probably work really really nice in here, little plant concrete, a couple of bits and bobs dotted on there. And then over on this wall, got my new toilet roll holder, a little basket with some spares, a little plant that I already had, which is moved from the shelf above down, a little clean sign, metal grey clean sign that I already had, which I've moved. My bin is now down here instead of my cleaning box, so it doesn't feel as packed around here and I already had that bin, it already went with the colour scheme. So I love that, floor looks absolutely fabulous over here. And then over at my bath, I've painted my uh, existing bath tray that was just white, I've painted it in that dark grey Frenchic. It's come up really, really nice. And of course my blind, which at the moment is closed just so that um, we didn't get loads of backlighting, but it looks really, really nice. I'm really pleased with it so I can have it down like this and closed or turn to let some light in or I can have the whole thing up. So I'm super, super happy with it. Up top here, I don't know if you remember, was some of the worst stained grout. This grout is now beautiful and white. Over here, of course, we've got my painted towel rail with a couple of the towels on that I got from Next. So again, there's that blue and the grey. And some new bathroom accessories, which I'm not sure whether I showed you or not. These I actually got from the Pound Shop. They have a, uh, from Poundland, they have a recycled bluey glass look. So there's a little soap dish, a little pot with some um, cotton buds in, paper cotton buds. Then over here we have got my under sink cupboard which has just come up. Beautiful, I absolutely love it. Down the side we've got my little loo brush stashed in and then yeah my under sink cupboard which now fits around the sink, absolutely perfect. Painted in Friendship Grey, I've put on some different handles than what came with it. Um, I've just put on these little gun metal-esque uh, handles from B&Q, they were a fiver. And my little cleaning box is down the side. Now, the cleaning box does look nice like this. Much more compact, much more neat. However, then my door 
doesn't open all the way, which doesn't bother me too much. But sat like that, it's much more easy to get in and out the room. So I think that's probably how it's going to live. Then above the sink, I've got some more of the bathroom accessories, which I got from Poundland. I've um, got a little soap dispenser and a cup. And the frame around my mirror is finished and I decided to just go for white, just to blend into the room. And then over on this wall, there was always just a um, towel hook and there's just another one of the blue towels over there. So that's it. All done, finished. I'm going to leave you with a few more looks at bits and bobs. I'm going to whack some music over it so you can peruse to your pleasure. But I would love to know what you think in the comments, if you like it, which bit's your favourite. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching this extremely long bathroom makeover vlog.